Hey guys, this is Maverick. He's here for uh, 10 days of uh, boarding and training. But he's a Ridgeback. This is a Ridgeback. And he is um, eight months old. It's the normal, you know, Ridgeback, eight month old thing, you know, that all the adolescent dogs have to go through. He has to learn some manners, manners in the house, not knocking over the trash, not jumping on the counter, not being consistently hunting for food. Of course, there's leash pulling, there's wanting to chase things. Um, you know, all the basics are gonna be involved as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with them. I think it's gonna be an excellent uh, trip and I hope you guys stick along and enjoy it. Hey friends, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training up here in Boston. And I'm very excited because in a few minutes, Maverick is gonna come. Maverick is an eight month old Rhodesian Ridgeback. He's gonna come here, he's here for training for 10 days. He'll be with me Monday through Friday and then the next week, he'll be with me Monday through Friday. During those days, I'm gonna make videos with this dog of things that we're working on. Frank is gonna edit those videos together and show you a full picture of what you can expect with the dog trainer. So, with no further ado, here he is. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You ready? Yeah, he's ready. It's, it's all right, just let him come in normal. We're, we're gonna be starting today, so it's fine. Excellent. Hi, welcome. It's good to see you again. Hi, how are you? Excellent. Gray collar. As we go through the training program, every day I do a nose to tail check on the dog. Um, I look for anything that is unusual. I also check their weight. I make sure that they're eating their food, you know, and that their weight is right. Cause I don't want the dog to go home looking malnourished. If a dog stops eating while he's with me, I send them home. That never has happened. At, you know, over a few days, I'll send them home. If they don't eat the first day, when you have some dogs that are really dealing with anxiety issues, shyness, and real severe um, emotional problems, then they might not eat. But I need them to start eating by the third day. And if they're not eating by the third day, then they have to go home because I'm not gonna let them stay with me and lose a bunch of weight. Um, these are customer service and quality care issues. Um, that I think that dog trainers sometimes do not pay attention to and it causes problems, you know, with, uh, with the board and train and with the professionalism in the industry. Um, it is something though that I pay attention to a lot. So um, anything, that, uh, anything about his health or anything? Um, his stools have been pretty normal. Is there anything unusual about him? Anything that, any scratches, anything like that? No, he's been licking his feet a lot. I don't know what that is. I know that's a newer all right. thing. Um, all right, do you know which, is it all of them, any of them? Or do you know which one? All of them, and I like it kind of trades off. And I looked at them, I didn't hey. see anything that looked like a cut or anything. Yeah. So I don't. All right. I don't know what that's about. He um, might just be. Yeah, and he scratched his ear. That's red. Yeah. That's red and uncomfortable. He scratched. This one looks normal. Normal. Yeah, so right. I don't, he's scratching that one. I know. I know. Whoa. Let's go here. I know. This is so annoying. Martin is so annoying. Ah, I might have to look again inside there. Yeah. Inside the mouth. The ear just looks like it's scratched and a little bit red. His, yeah, I think he scratched it with his paw. I know, I know, I know. I have to check you though. It has to be done. Some dogs, I can't do it. Oh, I'm the, come here. Hey, look what I got. I got food for you. 
you're a Rhodesian. Maybe you'll take the food. Excellent. Look right here. There's a bunch. All right. So in the video from the first day, when I was checking his rear paws, he was a little bit uncomfortable with that. Um, I still have to do it. So usually what I do is I'd put the dog on the leash at that point. I usually ask them to come back to me. I'll give them some food. Um, usually most dogs, they will forgive quickly. In other words, they won't be concerned, too concerned where they can't come back to you quickly. There are some dogs who, who will be a bigger problem. Um, what happens, what that really is, is trust. You know, now you can see when I touch his paw here, um, he's not trying to escape me. He's a little interested in it. He's, he's mainly, I think he's licking the ground. He's not even touching my hand here, um, but he allows me to touch that. Um, in the beginning, it's a matter of trust as well. Dogs only have four paws and they understand if I hurt one of their paws, then they won't be able to move the way that they want to move. So until they gain trust with me, for me to be able to just take and hold a paw, um, that, that's a required trust involved in that. If you notice, his nails are a little bit long. They were good when he started two weeks ago. Um, they were just on the edge. They do need to be cut. I do not cut nails when dogs come to me for board and train. And the reason I don't do that is because it takes time to rebuild a relationship if they don't like that. Yeah, that looks okay. Good boy. Excellent. Here, have some more. Now, I didn't see anything on his feet. Did you? No. Yeah. I didn't. I don't see anything right now, but I always do another. I do a check every 24 hours, sure. but I don't see anything. He looks really good. Um, his, there are some pink spots like right here, but yeah. that could be some of the irritation. We have to also remember this is his first fall. So there could be seasonal stuff and all that um, going on. Yeah, Let me take one more look at your ear if I can, please. You're such a good dog. Yeah, that's red. Yeah, you wanna come look? It was this ear here. It was really red on the inside. Um, and I thought there, there was an ear infection. With the ear infection, you can smell a yeasty smell. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Has he been shaking his head a lot? Like more than usual? Not necessarily. All right, I'm gonna put some more down, take a good look. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Go, 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 flip his ear, take a look. Is it all the way down the air canal? It looks like it might be. Um, all right, see if you could take a sniff. When we bring our face close to a dog's face, that also requires trust, right? Um, so he was not having it. Later on, I had his owners bring him to the vet um, while they had him over the weekend. Um, and they found out that it's actually an allergy, an environmental allergy, due to the um, fact that we are having really warm weather in November. Um, so they gave him some antihistamines or something and, and now his ear is a lot more, he's a lot more comfortable with it. He'll allow touching, I could look at it, all those kind of things, and he doesn't care. Can't get it. Let me, let's just do this. Let's do this. Here we go. Here we go. If I just hold him steady here, go ahead. I forget what they, Peyton's No, you'd before. know, you'd know. <laughs> you'd know right away. Like dogs, but like, yeah, like yeah. Dogs. If it was, if it was an ear infection, you'd know right away. You'd be like, dear. <laughs> yeah. Once again, though, it could be some environmental allergy. It could be any old thing. Yeah, we're done with your food. All right, so we're gonna walk down to the back. Once we get back there, um, you wanna grab your, your pouch, definitely. Once we get back there, I want you to say bye to him back there, and then we'll be able to come up, come back up. Um, I know it's a lot about stools, but normally his first poop is probably pretty solid. Yeah. And then does it stay, get softer during the day? Good, gotcha. All right, we got him on a good collar, a good leash. So one quick tip for you guys out there watching. When a client drops off a dog for the first time 
and I'm going for a walk with them, I don't like to attach my leash to the plastic clip. This clip is plastic and I don't trust it, <laughs> right? I don't know how hard this dog will pull me and he's a good 75, 80 pound Rhodesian Ridgeback, you know? So I'm gonna make sure I do all I can to keep this dog with me. Good grip. All right, we go for a walk. First walk, um, I'm gonna start to teach doorway, gateway etiquette already. I don't teach a lot on the first, good, good. I don't teach a lot on the first day, but I start working on this. It doesn't have to be perfect because we have 10 days. Good, good, good. There you go. Okay. First walk. Um, this is what it is. He's not pulling too badly now. Oh, there he goes. He's pulling a little bit there. He's not pulling too bad, but look at his tail. His tail is low. Um, I know Ridgebacks tend to have lower tails a lot of the time, but it's on the verge of being tucked there. Um, but otherwise, his body language looks good. Doing what dogs do. Probably thinking about peeing on one of those cars. We're not going to let him do that. I got a good leash grip, a good solid leash grip here, and I'm holding the camera in the other hand. I'm expecting him to do his number one. And we'll see. All right, so this is our first walk. All in all, this is not the worst I've ever seen. Good boy. I'm not giving treats because I'm holding the leash, um, but I, that's worthy of treats right there. And that's only gonna make him pay more attention to me as we go. Um, all in all, he is paying more attention than most dogs do at least so far, but this has only been the first couple minutes of the walk. We'll see how he does um, as we go on a little bit more. Um, you know, he might get a little excited and not want to pay attention as much, but he is walking definitely out in front of me and there is tension, steady tension on the leash, especially when he, it's, uh, he's going somewhere that he wants to go. There's tension. Let's go, buddy. Uh, he responded to that nicely. He saw somebody over there, no reaction. Excellent. Here there's pulling, right? But not a lot of engagement, but there is some. Cool thing about Maverick here is that his owner has another dog named Peyton, and Peyton is also a Ridgeback. And um, they worked with me last year, so I could already tell that Maverick understands some things within the system that we use for communication. Like he knows where to come and get the treat. A lot of dogs, I have to teach that to him. That alone already could start to change the way that he walks just because he knows that I have treats and he knows where to get them. He's a little, being a little bit nervous now. He's not taking that treat right away. Look out for that sign, Frank. <laughs> I'm helping Frank out with his recording. So there's some dogs barking in this backyard and I'm gonna watch how Maverick responds to that. He does not care. I heard the dogs, which means that he heard the dogs too. Now he looks, yep, he just little look, that's all it is. Good boy, I think he's too, he's more like checking out the environment because this is his first time here. And he's not really, he's just check, everything needs to be checked out. Let's go, good. Yeah, I got food for you. Excellent. Good dog. Excellent. So you might be curious about what my plan is with a dog like Maverick. Maverick, first of all, is an eight and a half month old adolescent Rhodesian Ridgeback. He has the same problems that most dogs will have, most adolescent dogs will have at this stage. Basic manners. 
Things like um, chewing things that they're not supposed to chew, grabbing things and having a little fun with them that they're not supposed to do. Um, they'll be a little mouthy sometimes, you know, because they get really excited. If you put something that tastes good and smells good on a the counter, they'll probably try to go up there and get it. You know, and those are the kind of things, you know, people come into the house. Those are the kind of things that we see a lot with adolescent dogs and that I help people with. My plan to deal with this is, um, is based around stress reduction, structure, and communication. So stress reduction, a dog like him, he looks happy-go-lucky, but underneath that, if somebody drops something, he looks nervous. If a child comes running up to a fence, he gets really nervous and he tries to bolt away. So underneath that, there's some fear, there's some anxiety, and there's some lack of confidence. So things that we could do to reduce stress, we work on those. Even before he comes here, I'm working with his owners on those. Structure, structure is demonstrating to the dog that you're in control of timing and spacing timing of events, what's going to be in his space? What is he going to be able to interact with? By controlling timing of events and the space around the dog, we put ourselves in a strong leadership position. In other words, we become a person of, of influence, right? A person who, who the dog knows that when we make up our mind about something, that we're gonna end up getting our way without raising our voice, without getting excited, but it's gonna go our way. The third thing that we always look at is communication. And communication is important because we have to be able to teach the dog things, new things, which means that we have to build engagement. We have to be able to get their attention on us so that way it's easy to teach them things. But it also means that we have to be able to um, tell them, yeah, when they got it right. It's all about getting the engagement. Let's go. Getting the engagement from the dog back to position one. Yes. And for me and many great trainers, we have to be able to say, no, that's not right. No, sit. No, sit. Good. Um, so that way they could understand both those things. Um, and that's important. Good job. Here we go again. I stop here. Yes, he sits automatically. I want that for the heel command. Good boy. Yes. Good job. Drop the leash as a trick. Yes. He didn't get off when I dropped the leash. He gets fooled for that. There he is. Working on a little recall. There you go, good boy. Okay guys, we're gonna take Maverick for a walk. This is his 10th day of training um, with me uh, for this program that we're doing. Let's see how he's changed since the first day. Here we go. Good. Okay. There's a chance that the first day that he came, he was either um, looking around, moving around, passing the lines that I have set for him, the boundaries that I have set for him. There's a good chance that all that was happening. But now you can see when we went out there, he was giving me attention, which has been something that I've been focusing on with Maverick uh, since the beginning. Because attention is the first step. Engagement is the first step to be able to solve unwanted behaviors. Yes, good boy, excellent. We can see here as I'm walking with Maverick, now he's walking next to me, a little bit behind me. He's paying attention. He's matching my pace. So if I sped up, he would speed up with me. If I slowed down, he would slow down with me. So he's matching my pace. I'm not doing anything with him yet. Good boy. Very good. I like to say good boy a lot because he's being good. And it took some effort to get him to be good. Good job. 
Yeah, excellent. Good boy. So this is how we walk. As a matter of fact, most of the time when we walk, we actually do not walk like this. Most of the time when we walk, we walk like this. Good boy. That's my phone. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, most of the time when we walk, we walk like this. So my hands are free. I'm not holding on to anything. Yes. Good boy. And um, yeah. And this is what we do. It's pretty boring. It looks pretty boring, but it's, um, it's a big change from where he was when we started. Good boy. Because even although he's not looking at me all the time here, he is aware of what I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> right? So you can see as soon as I stopped, he decided it was a good thing to stop. Good boy. Sometimes as I'm walking with him, because, you know, just for my own entertainment, I will take some treats and I'll just wave it like this in front of his nose. And he'll just touch at my hand and try to get the treat and eventually he'll get it. I do that, that's for my own entertainment as I'm going. Um, it is rewarding the dog, I am giving him food here, right? But um, he is being good. So yeah, as much food as I give, oh, what happened buddy? He dropped one. As much food as I give, it's okay. Um, because once again, he is being good. We're going that way. Okay, so as you can see, most of the time when I'm walking this dog, um, this is what it is. This is what it should be. And to tell you the truth, most dogs that come for board and train, we do this from day three on, you know, um, so they have a lot of practice with it. Good boy. Excellent. Good job. So why is this important? His problems are basic adolescent dog problems. He, um, he does things like jumping on the counter, being a little too excited in some situations, walking on the leash wasn't, he wasn't terrible in my opinion, but he wasn't great at walking on the leash. Um, so what this does, what this does is it gives me an opportunity to start to teach him the concepts of yes and no. And when I say yes here, I mean, yes, what you're doing is correct. I like it when you do that. And when I say no here, what I mean is, please stop doing that and pay attention to me. Pay attention and follow my lead. So that's all it is. Um, it helps the dog to come in line with our intentions. Just like how he's in line with my intentions now, he'll, he's gonna be in line with my intentions when we're in a kitchen. He's gonna be in line in my intentions when guests come over. He's always to be in line with my intentions. Yes. Good boy, excellent dog. I wanna talk a little bit about the, the consultation process and judging a dog before the board and train program and then adjustments to assessments that are made. So generally I start with the consultation process and the consultation process is really an opportunity for me to gather information about any dogs at home environment. What I do is I generally will send out to my clients um, a form. They'll fill in the form, I get it back, I read it over, I study it, um, and I think about the situations that they tell me about in that form. I write down additional questions to clarify anything. Then we meet in person. One of the big reasons for that in-person meeting is to temperament test and get an understanding as to who the dog is. Right, because I work with a lot of difficult dogs. I need to make sure that the programs are gonna fit for the dog. But there's another purpose. And the other purpose is for me to meet the owner of the dog, to make sure that the owner of the dog is going to follow the advice and instructions that I give, right? And there's a third purpose. The third purpose is for the owner of the dog to meet me and to decide if if my advice is advice that they, they want to follow. If any one of those things are off, then I do not take the contract. In other words, if I meet the dog and I can tell right away that the dog has serious problems that I'm not comfortable with dealing with, 
That, by the way, is very rare because I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I will not work with that dog. If I meet a dog and I know that the dog, let's say, is dangerous, but I also know that the person is not going to do what I asked them to do for various reasons, I'm not going to work with that dog. And if I work with somebody and I think the dog is, is dangerous and I think the person can follow instructions, um, but they don't like me, then I hope they tell me that so we don't work together because there's a lot of dog trainers. As far as his temperament, so when we met for the consultation, I only was able to be around him for one hour. And during that hour, I saw him as a happy-go-lucky dog. As we start training together and, and I get to know him better, and in that time, I've learned a lot more about him that he is a happy-go-lucky dog, but he also has certain problems with um, anxiety and low self-confidence. And I learned a lot of that on this same street that we're on now. This busy highway, he used to be very nervous because of the loud noise and the vehicles. But now, he's pretty calm, right? He's not excited, um, but he's, he's a lot better than he was. And the main reason for that is because he knows now how to pay attention, yes. How to pay attention and check in with me. He knows that like, if I'm not excited, if I'm not worried, then everything will probably be okay. So I know very well that I've only been with him for 10 days. Um, and these problems are problems that need a longer term plan. So the way I see it is my job as a dog trainer is really to be an example to my clients. Right, um, I know that the influence that I have on this dog where I'm with him only for 10 days, maybe he'll live 20 years, maybe he'll live 12 years. 10 days is not a lot of time. The biggest influence I could have on the dog is through their owners, not through the 10 days that they spend with me. So I hope this is helpful. If you like what you see here, then definitely click the link, subscribe to the channel. You know, um, that's gonna help us out and make sure that we can continue to make videos like this that you might find interesting. Um, definitely tell your friends, your family about this channel as well. Um, check out the People's Wolf podcast. Although that's a different show, it does help us to bring together the YouTube channel as well. Um, so definitely check that out. Dogs in the news, is this really fun. Um, you could also check out check us out on other social media outlets, descriptions, that's where you'll find them. And until next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog.